it's hard work, but it works. And it's that uh, slashing with a sickle to cut down grass and basically make biomass mulch. I'm Justin Hitt from Prosperity Homestead and I cut this row out yesterday. I'm actually not sure, I'm not gonna be able to work today. So I'll be uh, picking up some tools and coming back uh, tomorrow or later in the week. But I basically slashed the grass out of this area, mounded it up over the potatoes. It's gonna kill off some of the grass. It'll protect any of the potatoes near the surface from getting sunlight and ultimately will cover it out. But to be honest with you, it would be a lot easier to do with a flail mower because most of this is done and that's why it's overgrown. It's, it's August right now, it's super hot. So allowing the grass to grow kind of shades the soil. But then again, this it also helps uh, work out that seed bank because we actually have way too much seed in the ground here and the grass has come back, the weeds come back. Now we got a lot of clover, a lot of hairy vetch, a lot of greens and mustards coming in there. That's okay. But again, with all this bulk on top, if we don't get to it fast enough, this bulk becomes additional seed in the ground. What we need to have is, is basically flail it out or scythe it and then mound that material in, in straw pack and then that straw pack will kill off what's on the ground. It doesn't get rid of the seed, but it kills off what's on the ground. I just came to get this out because I won't be digging up potatoes, but you can see what I'm talking about there. There's two or three different types of grass in there. Uh, good news, oops. Good news is that there's some sun hemp in there and some uh, beneficial nitrogen fixing cover crops, but it is way too much biomass on the surface. So what really needs to happen, see I'm walking in and thick uh, matted grasses and stuff. You know, what it needs to happen is we pick all the veg out of it and then we just flail mow it into tiny little chips and then let that sit on the soil on the surface, throw some manures on top of it, throw some uh, compost on top and get that stuff to rot down. Otherwise it just becomes a matted mess. Here's what I was working on. Previously, you see how it, it dries out, becomes a mat. Over here, I dug up more potatoes and just left the mat on top of it. Could you do this with a string trimmer? Sure, you probably could do it with a string trimmer. Um, but I like to, to start um, formulating better uh, rows and better areas to do more of a market garden style with the permanent raised beds. So to start terracing out some of the level areas and get more usable space. And all this grass makes it difficult to plant out. But you can see a celery along there. Somebody's got to hand clean that celery up. It's kind of a pain. You got areas that were idle that are, that are now all overgrown, which is okay. Again, the biomass, but the flail mower is what's necessary. See, this stuff's going to seed now. Got nice areas out here where this grass has, has been cut for access. And so we can impound animals in here and, and impound them in sections. And that will remove some of the plants and vegetation. But we also have some soil challenges. Some of these areas were seeded with cover crops and the cover crops never came up. Or only certain seeds in that cover crop came up. And then these beds here with the flowers, they really need mulched out. Heavy mulch to, to kind of cultivate those bulbs. So you got some beautiful flowers coming up in there and they just need cultivation to get big clusters of flowers and then you can't even see my potatoes or my sweet potatoes down here because the the uh, weeds and other stuff grew back so fast so again this is this is not a failure per se you do want those seeds to sprout and get them all grown up but you want to be mowing them more frequently you want to you want to flail mow it out and get that ground, get that uh, that uh, crop residue on the ground in little tiny chopped up pieces, so it starts to break down. Uh, I would like to get in here, and shape the beds a little better. I think we've got some really good uh, level terraces up here for growing, and some really nice beds in here for planting out. But you can see how fast everything overgrew. If you compare previous pictures, uh, there were nice there were nice uh, beds here. Of clay and then we need to get that again we get all this chop down on it uh, make sure we're not flail mowing um, any of the lo locust trees over here because they'll go crazy but again just get in there and flail this thing out and keep shaping those contoured beds 
Here's basil that's gone to flower. And believe me, we picked out a lot of food out of here, but it's into season. How do we turn this into fall beds as quickly as possible? So the fall broad acreage is down on the bottom here, and that would be grains. And in this, this type of uh, undergrowth, if it comes up in grains, it'll be horrible to harvest that grain. It just won't, it'll just be too much competition. So again, impound animals, scythe it out, or get a flail mower in here. Now you can't necessarily impound animals in here where the flowers are. They might scratch up and dig up all the bulbs and eat those bulbs. So we can use what's called mulch layering. And so we take a mower, she should be wide enough that we can take a mower in between the paths and then just lay down mulch, just mound that mulch in here deep to kill the grass off. Two or three inches is not enough. You need about four inches of mulch and to get these things more defined. And then on the edges where we have like wildflowers and stuff, we kind of want to let the wildflowers go to seed. Pick those seeds. There's a beautiful set of wildflowers there. Pick those seeds and then flail mow it or scythe it to make some mulch. Benefit of flail mowing is it'll chop everything up into little tiny pieces and those pieces will rot out faster. Benefit of scything is that you get this long cut straw which makes a better mat and kills things out. Either way if you've let the plants go to seed those seeds are going to be in the ground out here and that's going to be a mess. But we're doing okay up here. Clover's not too bad. You got a lot of clover and hairy vetch up in these areas but they're almost overwhelming the uh, the pepper plants here and the tomatoes did okay but they should have been trellised up a lot better uh, this is another row of flowers it's about done same thing scythe and then mulch for the row of flowers but overall I'm not disappointed I'm just there's just a, a lot of seed in there and unless you're out here cutting it every time it gets knee high every time it gets hip high it will go to seed and when the plants naturally go to seed, they're gonna leave behind more of the same. And we don't want more grass. We don't mind more hairy vetch. We don't mind more clover. Um, but the, the grasses, uh, they get a little thick and, and competitive. So, but the bee activity is incredible. There should be plenty of honey this year. Bee activity is incredible with all the clover. So I'm Justin Hit with Prosperity Homestead. Click the link below, join our mailing list to get news and information about this kind of uh, low input. Um, uh, you know, uh, holistic food growth is, uh, by the way, it's flower seeds I put down the edges here. Um, and some management techniques, because you don't want to make it too much work. But then again, you don't want to come out here and just plow everything under. The terrace system worked great because it, it spread and soaked in the water. There wasn't any muddy patches out here. None of this has actually been overhead watered or even, even soaked. It's just all natural rain. Um, but again, unless we're turning this, this biomass into soil, we're not getting full benefit out of it. Thanks for watching. Click the link below. Until next time.